on the left we have the um, gateway and then on the right we have our garbage picked uh, trash PC you're probably wondering oh what are you planning to do with the uh, gateway on the left as you say in a non enthusiastic voice <laughs> well once we turn it on sometimes it takes two times to turn on Because it doesn't fully initialize the um, motherboard. Yeah, that's what's happening. It's either the, the power it's either the, the power switch fails, or either it fails all the way, or it just fails partially. Where you have to do this: I'll restart, and come over here, and here we have this. Bring this. Change the angle. There we go. That's better. Beep. And then let's go and choose conventional memory plus mouse plus CD. Okay, that'll boot Windows 98. Huh. Like I said. Didn't shut down all the way. Okay. Well, let's get this and does this improve it? No. Okay. Options down. Is there a brightness? Okay. So turning brightness all the way up actually does help. Huh. It looks better on the um on my phone screen. It does on the actual LCD. <clears throat> and that's another reason why having an LCD over a CRT is better. Because when you record it, it gets blurry. No, when you record it, it gets um, all flickery. Because the refresh rate of the camera mismatches the refresh rate of the... Um, screen itself so then you see the actual well refreshing of the screen so if we zoom in here come on oh my, there we go it was a two gigabyte drive and we have 290 269 megabytes free so what I'm going to do is take my 20 gigabyte quantum Fireball Plus um, drive. Take the original installation media. Then after I've done that, I'll take the Gateway System Restore CD. Come on, focus. Silver text on a black background. There we go. Version 9.5, which includes uh, drivers for the system. I really hope that didn't flip the video upside down. Okay, so without further ado, I'm planning on taking the system, powering it down, removing the old drive, because you can't make 20 gigabytes out of a 2 gigabyte drive, clearly. Removing the old hard drive. Plugging in the new one and preparing the hard drive, which entails um, F disk and uh, format, and then going and using the installation media. So, and I'm using my phone as a camera. If you're wondering why it's sort of shaky, uh, let's see. X, shut down, shut down, and they'll say, your computer is ready to shut down, or something.
Windows is shutting down. With that shut down, we'll go over to the side, remove the thumb screw, place it up on top, uh, remove the power, take the side panel off, put it to the side, then we will remove our hard drive. So, first start by removing the Molex power connector. And then disconnect your IDE drive cable. Whilst being careful of any surrounding electrical components that may be sensitive. Once you've done that, and have made sure that any and all cables are clear and free of the hard drive, proceed to realize that you screwed the hard drive in. In order to remove the hard drive caddy, you first have to remove your front panel. But in order to remove the front panel, you have to remove the side panel. Then, making your Phillips head screwdriver and making sure to realign these screws after you're done, you have to remove one, one, two, three, four. Oh, but I forgot to mention that before you can do that, you have to remove the bracing bracket, which is attached from the back. So you get that guy. And then, as you remove the screws, it should be simple to just... Before you go taking out the caddy, you have to also remember to get this screw. Because without it, you look like an idiot trying to pull the caddy. Okay, now, once you've removed that, being sure to remember what angle this bracket was attached, take your um, enclosure, remove the two side screws. Two on each side, that is. One, two, and make sure to drop them on the ground. That that helps your project. So, I'm going to have to put this end up and then pause it. After you've res extracted your hard drive from the caddy, take your new hard drive and just copy those steps. So, making sure that the IDE or SCSI connector is pointing towards the back. Because if it isn't, then you won't be able to um, attach it. And make sure that you have this at the right angle. Because, like I almost did, you can end up installing the drive backwards. You just slide it in as so, reaffix those screws, and most uh, 3.5 inch, no, more, most um, 5 and a quarter drive bays have the same ish uh, screw patterns, so whether or not 
you get it is up to if you lined it up making sure that all four screws are properly installed pretty much do the reverse of what I showed you previously of how to remove them and then align it with this hole after sliding it in so to do that is a little bit tricky because you have to get this met up with this making sure no cables are in the way and you need to take this down and slide it in okay after that has been done you take the one retention bracket screw and attach it as so then not wanting to forget you take your Berkeley Berkeley <laughs> earthquake proof um, attachment device and try to remember where the hole went figured out how that worked. So, screw back here. Okay, here we are back after a quick charge. My battery just had to die, so I just got one of the little portable charging brick things, whatever. So, you attach the bar using the screw here, and making sure it's sort of aligned and screw it down. So you tightened it, you can then take your Molex, the bar wasn't in the way, <laughs> you can take your Molex connector, plug it into your power, grab your data connector, preferably first slot, And align that with there. And get this all nice and cinched up. Put the back panel on. Put the side panel on, that is. Then put your side panel on, but actually not before you put your front panel on. Because if you put your front panel on before you put the side panel on, then it will throw everything off. So you line up the holes, line these up, Or, neither the panels have to be on, or neither the panels should be on when you go and place the front. Let's see about that now. Okay, I can't do this hand one-handed. Got the side panel on, and I got the front on. 
what I'm going to do next is grab our media which we will use. Here we are with our Windows 98 OS. Incidentally, it is uh, second edition. Then we have our driver CD, the system CD. And our big fat binder full of software. So yeah, we'll have fun with that. But we should probably first get our boot diskette. Actually, I don't remember if Windows 98 Second Edition was self-bootable. We'll just find out. So we're going to use the uh, 52 times uh, drive. Should probably plug in the power and a keyboard. Because those seem to make the computer work a lot better. So I'll plug in the power. Then. Check this. So put our CD in. Okay. You can hear it spin up. Hopefully the BIOS notices it. Let's see. Boot from CD ROM. There we go. I don't know if you can see, yeah, go from CD-ROM. Start Windows 98 setup. Come on, focus there. So it's going to identify the drives. Now it says there are two drives. Welcome to Windows 98 setup. So, um... Welcome to Windows 98 Setup. I'm going to continue. Um, actually, what we should do is we should do exit. Because I need to do an FDisk and a format. So, And you have a large delete partition. Four delete non dots. Data will be deleted. One. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Okay. Skip to continue. We're going to check if there's any delete any uh, MS DOS partitions. No partitions. Exit. Exit. And we will do as they say and restart. We're going to do a boot from CD-ROM. When it pops up, we are going to start the computer with... No, actually, we're going to start the setup and exit. So it's going to identify our CD-ROM drives. We have two of them, which is correct. A DVD-ROM and a 52 times um, CD-ROM burner, I think. It reads at 52, I don't think it burns at 52. F3 to exit, F3 to exit again. F O R M. Format C. Actually, the Windows setup may actually format it. We're going to run setup. 
Let's check our system. Oh, oh, okay. Forgot about that step. Haven't installed Windows in a long time. So we need to create a DOS partition. One. One. This is verifying the drive integrity. This may take some time, so I'm going to pause the video. Do you wish to make you wish to use the maximum size available? Yes, no. We're gonna do yes. Actually I should probably hit the enter key and not the slash key. Y for yes. Just now going to verify the drive again. Keep in mind, this system is running a Pentium 3, cartridge type that is, running at 550 MHz. This system originally came with a Pentium 2. It was upgraded later on. Imagine how long this would take on an even slower system. A hundred megahertz or two hundred megahertz system. And people did install it on 166, 100 megahertz and 200 megahertz systems. I mean, for example, my little system here, this system right here with the label says you can put NT or 95 on this, and it's currently running a little Pentium, clocked at 166. So you must restart your system. So we'll just do escape, and let's go over to restart. The system actually boots a lot faster than some other systems I do have. I have another gateway that takes way too long for the BIOS to pull the hardware. It may have like a faulty drive or something. Beep. Okay, we're going to go and do boot CD-ROM. Start the setup. Go through the fun of it detecting our hardware. Right now I'm looking at it through the um, viewfinder and trying to balance the phone on my hand. So, uh, when to set up, uh, we're going to press enter because we want to install Windows. I'm going to do this all one handed uh, while looking through the viewfinder on the phone. So yes, I'm going to format the drive. I forgot that um, Windows Setup formats it for you. I thought you had to go back over into the command line and do um, format space C colon. Well, I'm going to leave this and let it format, and I will come back when it's finished. One fun thing I did notice is that apparently the entire 12 minute section of what I was filming was filmed upside down. This camera, whatever position you start it in, will not rotate the filming. So if you hold your camera upside down, it's going to film upside down. It's not going to shift the frame. So for 12 minutes, I've been technically filming upside down. So I have to take the video, convert it, take the audio, match it up with the new converted video, and put it into my video. That's what I did with the garbage PC, but it's not fun at all. So while this is still formatting, I'll probably go through and do the editing of that video so I'll actually have it available. So yeah. Um, that's about it. It's still formatting as you can see. Uh, about 24% now. So about 24% now. I'll be pausing the video and picking it up when it's finished. We're back and it says 
Uh, sorry, someone sent me a message, so it popped up. Okay, setup is going to perform a routine check. Press enter, blah blah. So it's basically um, a stand disk. And it's going to copy the files. And welcome to Windows 98 setup. It's actually surprisingly fast, probably due to the um, CD-ROM drive. Yep, we want to do Windows preparing. The checking for install components only applies if you have either MS-DOS, um, Subsystem 6.0 or newer, or Windows 95. So we're going to do a custom I've chosen, I've chosen to install everything except the network components. So let's go over and do next. And I'm going to name it Gateway. Named it Gateway G6350. Same work group as. I always wonder people that leave work group as default, if they ever connected to that work group. Would they have access to, like, millions of computers? Hmm. Something to think about. We're in the United States. And we'll now start copying the files. Welcome to Windows 98. Please sit back and relax. I'm just trying to get at least the um, loading bar to see how long it will take. I don't think it will take 26 minutes. There we go. I'll be back when this finishes. And we're done. So let's do restart. When we do a restart, we're going to select hard drive, because it's copied the files to the hard drive. We are going to set it up just as it was before. Actually, hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Actually, run. Do we accept the agreement? Yes, no. 
Well, that's sort of a given, because if you don't accept it, you can't use it. I keep hitting the back button on my phone, thus canceling the camera app. Okay, so we're going to click agree, not I do not agree. Do next, and at this point I will pause the video because I do not want to give you my serial. After getting confused on whether or not it was a 6 or B in their serial code, I finally figured it out, and we are on our way. Let's do finish. Just going to scan and look for drivers. And go, oh hey, look what you have plugged in. If it's not found that we use the Additional drivers just get this actually see. What it should come back with is a Rage Pro 128 4XL and a Sound Blaster Pro 16 plug and play. Whilst well, there is Sound Blaster 16 on board, I have an add in card. Strangely enough, this was ordered with a Sound Blaster add-in. Why someone would order it with an add-in card when the motherboard included that sound chip is beyond me. Okay, restart now. Even more plug-and-play hardware. not asked us for our time zone, but that seems correct, December 14th, 2014, currently 116. Now it's updating the system settings. This usually takes a lot less time than this. It's finished. Enter to restart.
it from hard drive. So, okay, here we are with this. It's been installed. Let's see what it detected. So, I found the monitor. Oh, well, we already know the monitor. So is this in 256 color or something? Here's our desktop. We have audio now, but not, not video. What that means is we will have to go and use the video. What that means is we're going to have to use our driver's diskette CD. You can only retake that scene so many times. Then you just sort of give up. If you're not going to say your line properly, then why try? I'm going to take our system CD here. Welcome to your system restor restoration CD. So it's currently installing our drivers. We've now installed our mouse. We're going to return to Windows and not restart just yet. Let's see, what do we have on? 
I actually don't have the original keyboard. I'm going to see which one is, which matches it the best. I'm going to pick this guy. Multifunction keyboard installation. We'll restart later. Actually, we're going to do a cancel because it's already installed. Then we we'll go over to control panel. Oh, this is hurting my arm, though. I have to hold it. Time for a new approach. I plugged in the old hard drive, and what I'm trying to do is get the drivers to the new hard drive. I'm going to boot up the old Windows 98 install. It helps that I can copy the USB driver to the um, floppy diskette down there and then once I install the drivers I can take the video drivers off of the thumb drive hope I saved this stuff here's what I've managed to do or lack thereof After that mild interruption of my phone freezing, the battery dying, me having to unplug the battery, replug it back in, restart my computer, restart my phone, I finally am here. Okay, here's what I've done, or lack thereof. This computer here, I do not have the graphics drivers. Then, I also need the USB drivers to plug a USB in, so then I can copy the video drivers. Problem. I don't have a modern system that has a working floppy drive. This system here, which I thought had a working floppy drive, the floppy drive is broken. So I need to remove this, swap the floppy drive for this floppy drive, put a brand new diskette in, copy the drivers that are on this thumb drive to that floppy drive, and then take the to that floppy disk, and take that floppy disk, put it in that floppy drive, start the computer up, copy the drivers, get the USB drivers, install the drivers, plug in the USB drive, this one, then copy the video drivers. <sighs> yeah. I managed to get the front off, but I didn't realize that there were some screws there, so I ended up ripping off that plastic piece. But it's okay, I mean, this is a free computer, whatever. So, put this through here, take that out, put the new one in, There, good as new. So now here's the moment of truth. Is it recognized by Windows at all? Okay, so it's there. Now will it read a floppy drive? Will it read a floppy disk?
Oh. Hold on. I may have a solution to the problem. I'm going to use this imaging computer with its floppy drive to hopefully copy the files. I've finished copying the files to the thumb drive. Now I'm going to plug it into here and grab a blank get, which I want to use. Take the USB keyboard mouse receiver. Go over here, start the copying from the thumb drive, for actually from the desktop, to the floppy drive. While we're at it, I'll format these suspicious floppy drives, floppy distets. Using a floppy drive, I'll format the suspicious floppy diskettes and it's it's already 401 how about I've been at this for three hours like four hours whoo that's fun so I copied the file to the floppy drive to the floppy diskette now I'm going to boot into Windows execute the file and then see if the USB drive is recognized first I'll shut down that computer Cancel, yeah, I know, there's no adapter. Doing this all one handed. Well, The floppy distet may be a bad one. Because it was able to read it, but when it went to go and copy it, it this is no distet. So either the drive is failing, or the distet I picked is failing. This may have a better chance of working, because it seems to be copying the file faster. So, once this completes, we'll see if it's any good. I've taken what I think is the proper floppy disk. So we'll just see. And scan disk, okay. Let it complete its thing.
So right now I'm copying the file from a floppy disk to the computer. Okay, so it might have just been a bad disk. just installed the USB drivers, it's restarting. Hopefully what will occur is I plug in my USB drive and it detects it, I can install the drivers and then everything's happy. Let's see what happens when we uh, plug in the USB drive. Let's see what catches fire or something. So I installed it, it said, found new hardware, and here we are, finally. <sighs> okay, so. Um. Okay, so I guess that didn't work. Well, that's done a wonderful job in pretty much making it so I can't uninstall the display adapter. There's a catch-22. I can't install the graphics drivers without 
DirectX 7 or higher. But I can't install DirectX without graphics drivers. So I found my copy of Unreal Tournament and I'm taking the DirectX 8 files and installing them. I found a way around the uh, graphics glitches. And so once I do that, then I'll run the installer and install the graphics drivers, which will hopefully work. This is a much more pleasant sight. I finally found the drivers. They're intuitively f named 98ME540CD19.exe. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense, Windows 98, but... It, I... yeah. Took me like four... wow, five hours to get this up and running. Okay, um... I think I'm going to... the video is long enough. It's not five hours, that is, but the video is long enough, so I'll stop it here, um, and pick up later.